Hello, I'm Dammit Morin of the Ross and Mocha Show on KISS 92.5. Welcome to a new segment I'd like to call Rice with Rice. This is Tim Rice, the very famed songwriter Tim Rice. Welcome to the first edition of Rice on Rice. Thank you very much. Was it Rice with Rice? I don't know. I think let's we're still, we're still perfecting the name. Let's say it's a series. <laughs> well, then you've got to keep coming back for more Excellent. rice. There's your rice. Thank you. So you're back in Toronto, because you've been here before. I have, you? yeah. I've been about four times before. Now, we're uh, talking about the play Chess. This was, uh, I guess you did this in, was it 1984? We did the album, me, Bjorn and Benny, the ABBA lads, um, we did the album in 1984. Well, we were working on it for two years, but it came out in 84. And they are the bees in ABBA? They are the bees in ABBA, Benny, Och, Bjorn. And now, it's back again. Are you ever shocked when something you've worked on comes back this many years later and people flock to see it? Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, this one hasn't, in a way, hasn't gone away. It's been, it's been done ever since it opened in London on the stage in 86. It's been done somewhere. There are always productions popping up somewhere. So um, some of them are good, some of them are not so good. And this one has turned out to be rather successful. And it was a tour of the UK in, um, well, last year, 2010, through to 2011. And because it did rather well, we brought it to Toronto. Now, you've written some of the best songs in my life. Like, I mean, there are some songs that have made me cry, have gotten me through, you know, hard times and stuff, and they were penned by you. And it's just remarkable. How do you come up with lyrics? Like, do you, do you have a routine? Like, I have my Earl Grey tea, you know, my English muffin, and I sit by that window. <laughs> well, I have my rhyming dictionary. <laughs> um, and uh, basically, most of the songs I've written well, firstly, one has to say, I only write the words, so it's 50-50, you know, I often get inspired by a great tune. But the key thing for most of the songs I've written, which mainly come out of films or shows, it's the storyline, it's the plot. So it's quite a plus when you think of a song like Don't Cry For Me Argentina. If, if I sat down with um, Andrew and say, let's write a song, and we didn't have a show, it was just a pop song we were going to write, we never would have come up with something like Don't Craft Me Argentina in either department, music or lyrics. But because it was a very important part of a story we were telling, viz. If the tale of Eva Peron, it then, the whole thrust of the storyline of the song became Don't Craft Me Argentina. I was writing something that nobody had really written about mm -hmm. before. It wasn't just a straightforward love song. And that's why it worked. What we never envisaged with that particular song, why am I plugging a beater? What, <laughs> what we never envisaged with that particular song was that it would become a hit out of context. We wrote it purely as a scene in a musical. Well, same with Lion King. Well, Lion, yes, true with Lion King. We wrote um, Can You Feel That Love Tonight was, you know, about two lions getting together in the jungle, which is, again, not something I've personally experienced. That's the one that made me cry. Oh. Well, it's a good song. El it's Elton's vocal, I think, that, that for me really turned that from a good song into a very good song. Did you write the beginning too when they went, Yeah, Because I want to learn how to spell that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't. <laughs> that was written by Lebo M., a very, very talented um, writer, songwriter and composer um, from South Africa. And the flavouring, um, the African flavouring of The Lion King was, was, was put in by Lebo M., and by Hans Zimmer, the great mm -hmm. film um, orchestrator and arranger. But basically, Elton and I wrote these songs, which had to fit situations. I Can't Wait to Be King. Again, that's not something you'd write out of, out of no. context. No, well. Um, Hakuna Matata. I mean, that was a fun song to do, but I never would have thought of taking a Swahili phrase for a song unless it had been inspired by a bigger... Mm -hmm. concept, viz the, um, the, the storyline of the film. So um, when you ask me, how do I write lyrics, what, what gets me going, it's 90% of the time, it's, it's, it's the story, the situation of the characters, whether they be a warthog with wind problems or an Argentine dictator's wife, <laughs> you still have to have the same approach, make the lyrics plausible for that character within that situation. This is Rice with Rice. I'm Maury. This is Tim Rice. And this is Kiss 92.5. When you're listening to songs on the radio, like Lady Gaga or something like that, and you, because obviously you're a lyricist, so you listen to the lyrics where most would listen to the music, are you ever like, 
Really? Oh, no, my God. Well, I then do... be honest. This is rice with rice. <laughs> I don't follow the current popular scene as closely as I did. I mean, anything from 1956 to 1981, I'm pretty good on. After that, I'm struggling a little bit. Lady Gaga, I like what I've heard of her stuff, and I've heard quite a bit of it. I particularly like her current song, You and I, which oh, actually Jesus. references Jesus Christ. And when I first heard it, I didn't know who it was. I thought it was sort of almost Shania Twain. It had a country feel to it and her own special rhythm. Um, and it certainly was the lyric of that song that grabbed me. I didn't know who it was the first time I heard it. Um, I think it's probably true to say that, that if a song has a pop song has an arresting line or phrase in the words, I'm more likely to like it. When I was a kid, very young, and Elvis was king and all was right with the world, um, the songs that I really thought were, you know, grabbed me were songs with great lyrics like Jailhouse Rock. Oh, a wonderful a lyric. Um, or the Beatles. Um, Buddy Holly, um, Eddie Cochran. This is pre-Beatles I'm talking about. Um, the Beatles, of course, wrote wonderful songs in both lyrical and, and musical departments. I mean, all I'm saying is, is that, that uh, perhaps slightly unusually, even, mm -hmm. in, even in my very young days, I found myself attracted to the words as much as to the music. Okay, before we have some fun, because I don't want to lose, I want to have some fun at the end. More fun than we're more already fun. having. I'm going to say, how can we have more fun than this? Well, wait, you'll find out. <laughs> um, chess. It's uh, chess. here at the, uh, the Princess of Wales Theatre. Right. Um, why should people go and check this out? Well, I think chess is a good show. I suppose, as I wrote it, I, I would say that. But on reflection, of some shows I've done, I probably wouldn't say we're very good. Um, but let's not go there. Um, <laughs> chess... Um, as, as I've said, has had its ups and downs, and some productions have been great and some haven't been quite so great. But this is one that's worked, and it's a complex story. It's not the sort of musical you can necessarily fall asleep in and wake up 20 minutes later and still know what's going on, which you can do with most shows. Um, and it's, it's, it's got several strands. It's basically, it's a love story, it's a love triangle set against the background of both an international chess match and the Cold War of the 70s and 80s. So it's quite a lot to take in and um, I hope it's not too complex or confusing, but it's certainly true, true that you might need really to have your wits about you to get the maximum out of it. But do what I hope it means is that you'll come back again the following night to get the bits you didn't get the first time. Now, do you play chess? I do, but... What's your happy. first move? What's your first, what do you always play? Because me, I always play the pawn, right? You go two, up two and then over one. Well, you more or less have to... Do you mean no, the knight? The, well, the little tiny the thing. The horse or the pawn. The oh, pawn. No. Well, well, it's the knight that goes two and then one to the right or the left. But, I think um, you're right. <laughs> I, must, I must play you chess for money. <laughs> um, no, I would normally... I mean, I don't play very often, but I suppose nine times out of ten I would do a rather boring, you know, queen's pawn two places forward. Now, um, okay, so how well do you know your own lyrics? Well, ooh, quite well. Again, it's funny, the earlier stuff I can remember, the more, more recent stuff I, I struggle with. Okay, ready? <laughs> this is my favorite song, Circle of Life. Oh, right. No okay, problem. so I'll begin, you finish the lyric. Ready? From the day we arrived on this planet... And blinking step into the sun. Um, there is more to see than can ever be seen. More to do than can ever be done. I'm so impressed with you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, that one's not that old, and it was quite a big hit, so I can remember that one. But there are one or two, I think. Sometimes I'm watching a show of mine, and I think, hang on, they've got the words wrong, and, and, and they haven't. It's me who's got them wrong in the audience. There is far too much to take in here. More to see than can ever be seen? No. More to find that can never be found. More, as I was going to say, it couldn't be seen. Well, right I, right. I tricked you. I skipped down at first. Oh, well, you, you rotter. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a great honor to be here. It was an honor to meet you. Well, you know, mutual. <laughs> Thank you. Are we going to eat the rice now? I wouldn't. <laughs>